The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Munker, his guests, and callers on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2020. All rights are reserved. We have to lock the country down. Who's on the bottom? But not now. This is powerful. We on lockdown, on lockdown, just like before, just like before. Every other weekend, lockdown some more, down some down more. Freedom more. March, Rodney Monker, about to do his thing and adjust the country concerns. Lockdown, baby, lockdown, baby. This is powerful. Lockdown, baby, lockdown, baby. With Rodney Monker. Welcome to Freedom March, and of course, today happens to be Wednesday, the 13th of March 2023. Um, we now have evidence that COVID is beginning to rise here on the island of New Providence, and I've not been successful in contacting the Health Minister, Dr. Michael Darville. Um, I'm very concerned about that because really I do not want to catch COVID. And of course, I think I'm fortunate to have taken an American vaccine, but I appear to be coming very close to people whom I'm beginning to learn later have been seriously infected with COVID. So I want the Ministry of Health to either confirm it or deny it and or I shall continue to change the narrative and just focus on COVID. As COVID is increasing in my environment, there are scores of Haitian national who are preparing their vessels to head to the Bahamas. So, we better get ready because we've been successful so far in capturing them, but I am told they're coming by boat loads. So, we better find some blanket for them, and this is powerful. This is Freedom March. God save the Bahamas because COVID is here. God save the king. This is powerful. We on lockdown, on lockdown, just like before, just like before. Every other weekend, lockdown some more, down some more. Freedom March, Rodney Monker. About to do his thing and adjust the country concerns. Lockdown, baby, lockdown, baby. This is powerful. Lockdown, baby, lockdown, baby. With Rodney Monker. Lockdown time, 
Welcome back to Freedom Match, and we are broadcasting live from the ILTV studios located here at University Drive. And of course, my name is Rodney Monka. Today happens to be Wednesday, the 13th of March, 2024. My spiritual advisor, praise the Lord, is Bradley Rule. Bradley, welcome to Freedom Match. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you have on the full armor of the Lord? As always. Well, behold the Bohemian As people. As always. And behold the thousands of people the Haitian people who are preparing to invade the Bahamas. So, thank you so much, Sandra. Good to be here again. And of course, we are uh, going to continue our, our discussion on our case for faith as it relates to um, the gospel and the gospel being preached uh, according to Jesus. He gave his disciples the mandate to go and spread this gospel. And he said, whoever believes this gospel and is baptized will be saved. Um, I know uh, I've been giving you some very interesting um, facts from the book of Acts. Interesting, some facts from the book of Acts where we see a lot of folks who the gospel is preached to, they believe and they were baptized the same day, the same night or that very hour. There was no delay in their baptism. Uh, that's because um, belief in baptism goes together in order for salvation in Christ to be complete. And so we have another case for faith today. We're going to continue in the book of Acts chapter 16. We're going to look at Paul and Silas uh, as they went into uh, Philippi, uh, spreading the gospel. Uh, we're going to see where Lydia is going to contact the apostle Paul and Silas, and he, she's going to hear the gospel um, her, on her household. And of course, they would then uh, uh, consequently um, be baptized into Christ. So Acts chapter 16, 13 to 15, another case uh, where we see uh, the gospel being preached, and of course, in response to that gospel, through belief and baptism, they became believers in the Lord. So here it is, Acts chapter 16, Sabbath uh, verse number 13, it says, on the Sabbath, the Jewish Sabbath, that is, we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Tathira. Her name was Lydia, uh, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God, of course, under the Mosaic system, which is Judaism. It says, the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. Note that. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to a home. And she says, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, uh, she said, um, click up, Mr. Producer. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house, and she persuaded us. Thank you so much, Mr. Producer. This is extremely powerful. Another case, and, and listen, what I'm showing you is in your Bible, all right? So you have to pick your Bible up and read it. You need a red Bible. I'm not talking about, I know there was some confusion yesterday when I told folks you need a red Bible to see this. I'm not talking about a, the color Bible. I'm talking about a R-E-D Bible. I'm talking about an R-E-A-D Bible, a red Bible, because you're going to have to read your Bible to follow it with me so you can see where I see what I am seeing here in the book of Acts. Where we have another case where we have some, some folks responding to the gospel after hearing the message and, of course, believing and again being baptized. I have the facts, undisputable facts. I ask your preacher. They may not be preaching this correctly, but it's time to correct this because a lot of people's souls are in danger of being lost. So here it is another case of faith today, Acts chapter 16, 13, 13 through 15, belief and baptism. You're a believer, and of course, you are now saved in Christ Jesus. The word of God is forever and ever blessed. Amen. Thanks so much, Mr. Medusa, and of course, back to you, Senator. Thank you, my producer. Spiritual my advisor. <laughs> Thank you, my spiritual advisor. Been one of those days, Sandra. I know, I know. Thank you very much. 
But folks, um, we are receiving and we have evidence of a number of citizens who have contracted COVID. And we are rather concerned over the fact that health officials have not issued any statement on it. And that is very concerning, particularly in view of the fact that there has been this major celebration of having perhaps seven vessels that have arrived here at our cruise port in Nassau. So we are very concerned over the fact that COVID appears to be spreading and, and we are hoping that the Ministry of Health will confirm and or deny that there appears to be this new increase in COVID. I think it's very important so the members of the public can perhaps return to the necessary precautionary measures that were once introduced here in the Bahamas during the Hubert Alexander Minnis administration notwithstanding our criticism of Hubert Alexander Minnis, the former prime minister, he did have in place a very powerful protocol which enforce and encourage citizens to maintain a reasonable safety standards. Um, for instance, you were told to keep um, at a certain distance, that you should sanitize your hands, you should clean your doors, and of course, everybody were encouraged to become vaccinated. And as a result of the mass vaccination, um, perhaps thousands of our citizens and residents did not die. You would recall in the, in the height of COVID we saw in the United States of America, and perhaps if I have it correctly, in the state of New York, there were perhaps thousands of American citizens who perished, perhaps due to the lateness uh, of having vaccine on hand. But we all know citizens who perish. I can just give you five powerful names right now of well-known citizens who died as a result of contracting COVID-19. So we hear no people citizens who in more recent times have come down with COVID, but nobody's saying anything about it. I don't know if those citizens who came down with COVID, whether or not they were vaccinated from day one, or whether or not they need to have a booster shot. I don't know if I need to have a booster shot, but I think the Ministry of Health need to tell us do they have the evidence that I have that there are people who have been coming down in more recent time with COVID-19? COVID-19, we all saw, was a very serious, serious issue in the world and here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. So it is my hope and prayer that health officials will confirm and or deny or tell us, listen, yeah, we've had some increase, but it is not as huge or not as dangerous. And what are the necessary precautionary measures which is being suggested that our people and residents carry out to ensure that we don't have a pandemic, an outbreak? Mr. Virgil Advisor, do you have any comments? No, no, no. But, you know, it's interesting that, um, of course, the Ministry of Health um, need to pay attention if, of course, cases are being reported and folks are in hospitals uh, seeking uh, treatment, 
to make sure the public is aware. And if it is a public concern, to come out and say, uh, we have a concern as it relates to COVID-19 and give us what those concerns are. And of course, like you say, we have to re-educate the crowd, I mean, the public as to exactly what they need to do to protect themselves from um, contracting uh, COVID-19, especially as you go to public spaces, whether it be restaurants, food stores, malls, gas stations, wherever you go. But um, um, yep, it's, in it's interesting that there is concern uh, that COVID-19 could be on the rise, and if it is so, then the public needs to be made aware. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So we thought we will say that to you, and perhaps um, we shall continue to speak about it straight through to the end of the week, because we are very concerned and we are very alarmed over it, because um, we think we know what we are saying. So for heaven's sake, those at the Ministry of Health that is needed. Do we still have community nursing? Um, I'm kind of concerned that there are citizens in a number of communities who need nurses to visit their homes and to provide them with health care. And I do wonder if there are still community nurses. I do recall that when I was a teenager and perhaps younger, we seem to have had a contingent of community nurses who on a daily basis visited the home of people who were sick um, and ensured a number of things, either that they got injections and or they took care of serious wounds and wrappings. And in the district of New Providence are citizens who are now appearing who needs nurses to visit their homes. And I would hope that the Ministry of Health would make it clear if, for instance, one is living in the Elizabeth Estate community, and on South Beach, or perhaps in Fleming Street, or maybe down in Armstrong, where there are community clinics. Um, is it the policy that you visit the clinic and say, listen, I know a neighbor, I know a friend, I know a relative who requires community nurses to visit them. Because there are people, I'm advised, who urgently need community nurses to visit them. And for whatever reason, they appear to be unable to make the necessary contact. And so each and every one of us who perhaps know how it is done should join in to ensure that it is drawn to the attention of health officials with a view to having that done. I thought I would say it um, for what it was, and that would be very powerful indeed. Well, it appears, well, I just want to put members of the public on notice that tomorrow, if it's God's will, we're going to have the minister responsible for the Defense Force, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, and the prison services, in fact, national security, who's going to be our special guest particularly in view of the fact that there appears to be a drum that is being beaten silently. It sounds like the drum of warfare. And so um, the minister responsible for national security is a lay pastor in the Holy Heineken Church, so I think we are going to have him as our special guest so we can talk about national security because last night there was a major, I call it major, 
robbery that took place in Fort Charlotte and a Negro citizen is alleged to have been accosted by a Negro gunman. When it was all over, the Negro citizen lost the car and the Negro gunman successfully took possession of the car and fled the scene. And so people are saying that they don't see sufficient CCTV. They're not seeing perhaps sufficient lights in many of the areas. So it would be good to speak with the Minister of National Security because a part of his overall national security strategy is street lights and CCTV. We'll talk about it, okay? And we'll talk about the Haitians and the smuggling in Grand Bahama at Airbnb, okay? I want Airbnb boycotted in Grand Bahama and tell the government, capture all those Haitians hiding there. This is Freedom Match. God save the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. God save the King. Welcome back to Freedom Match. My name is Rodney Monker. Bradley Rule is my spiritual advisor. And when we took the adjournment, we were looking at the one report of a crime which occurred last night, I'm advised, in the Fort Charlotte community, the Fort Charlotte constituency, which is led by the Progressive Liberal, the Progressive Liberal Party minister responsible for immigration, the Honorable Alfred Says. And I told you that a Negro citizen was accosted, and if I have the sex correctly, her vehicle was taken away by at least one, perhaps two, Negro gunmen. And um, the issue of security is always a challenge, and so we were telling you that the minister responsible for national security, the Honorable Wayne Monroe, um, we are having him back because it appears that the drums of war is subtly in the air as the Caribbean, the United States, Brazil, Canada, and La France are talking about a peacekeeping force in that black slave plantation, all right? So, and Haitians are preparing to depart. So as the forces get ready to go into Haiti, Haitians are preparing because they found a wonderful way to the United States. I've been telling that to you for the last couple of days in which they get here on the island of New Providence and for $7,000 they're able to get into Grand Bahama where they're met and they have been housed in Airbnb. It's a beautiful concept. I never thought of human smuggling but I now know that if you're going to be successful at human smuggling, just get some Airbnb. And once you occupy Airbnb, everybody drop their guards. The immigration is right at the door knocking. That's what my intelligence is. Immigration knock right at the door, but it's Airbnb. The buildings look so nice, and they doubt that anything illegal is taking place. So, and then, they either dress, can you imagine, Negroes with blonde hair, or Negroes wearing bikini. Now, they've changed the uniform. So I've 
send a message to them, can you send me a picture? But they're asking too much money for the photo. I can't afford that amount of money. I'm prepared um, to pay $500. So the only problem is I don't know who to pay it for, but I can't pay $5,000 for that picture. But I'd like to see the photograph with the Negroes in uniform, but there must be a white man in it, okay? If, if it's only Negroes, uh-uh, I, I, I want it. You gotta give me the picture of the white man because I need evidence to show the country that this level of gangsterism is alleged to be controlled by white Americans. That's, that's what they tell me. So Monroe will come, so we can ask Monroe, when is he gonna close down the, the um, Airbnb in Grand Bahama, where it is alleged the Haitians are, are being moved from place to place, because apparently immigration is now on the mood. That's the intelligence that I'm receiving. So it's great to hear that immigration is on the move because we are hoping that by the intervention of the immigration, we perhaps could prevent more people from one family being drowned, all right? Um, this isn't a question of drowning different family. Uh, uh, it's to see whether or not you can stop one family from being drowned. So these are some of the things that we're going to talk about because the Haitians, um, perhaps this is a good time to leave Haiti. So I don't know if they're going to be successful in getting to NASA. Um, where have you heard the Defense Force have taken the last set of captured my spiritual advisor? Uh, I, I haven't really been following that. Um since, I mean, a couple of days ago, there were some migrants that they may have caught um, close to the Turks and Caicos Island. They were taken back to TCI. But when I got home he, yesterday evening, the neighbors told me that um, there was a group of migrants that were apprehended just across the street from where I live. Your house? Yeah. There's, there's, there's this <coughs> My spiritual advisor. How, How many? Man, man. This, this is, no, 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 no. This is nothing to rejoice over. My spiritual advisor, these they were are, captured. These are undocumented. They were captured? Yeah. So they, that's nothing to rejoice over? I don't know where you was headed, but putting your hand up in the air, because I know how you are, you know, with pushing your propaganda. But um, um, in any wow. event, um, there was some migrants. It's amazing, hey. There's some migrants that he came He does in. not even want me to rejoice when the Haitians so were would, captured. Would, okay, so you're rejoicing that they've been captured. <laughs> you realize that these are undocumented? Migrants, right? Okay. Right. And they've been captured. So they've been caught by immigration. How far from your house? Uh, <laughs> two long posts is like what? Maybe 300 feet? Really? Yeah. Okay. It's the boat ramp. It's the ramp. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, and the thing about it too, what I don't understand about our defense force, and I could be wrong because I need to get some information. Okay. That southern area. As you head west, the Coral Harbor base is not too far from where South Beach and that ramp is. As you head South Beach, you go west all along Coral Harbor, and of course the Defense Force base is there. How do they get past the Defense Force base? Come now, they, 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 you know they, They're going to sail right across the bow of the Defense Force and come straight into that you know ramp. Why? How do they do that? You know why. I mean... What gift, yeah. according to myth and legend, do they possess? Who? Those who are on the ship? Yes. I don't know. What, what, gift do they, what gift do they possess? Okay. Voodoo? They, they can make themselves transparent that you don't see them until they land? Really? I don't know. I'm, I'm just asking you. But no, I'm, I'm wondering if they don't have satellite or drones that you can actually detect or see when traffic is heading that area 
Um, I know at one point they were trying to beef up the security. How area. did they capture those who were coming near your home? Well, the, the, the ship, they understand that the boat came on board, came ashore, and the migrants proceeded to run off, and uh, some calls were made, and the police responded very quickly, I understand. And captured all? Yeah. I don't know how much they may have captured. Any they escaped? Captured it. Of course. Uh, no. Some escaped? Yeah. yeah. Well, Miss Richard Weiss, yeah. I'm saddened to hear that some escaped so, because it would mean that they are lost? They're not lost, my brother. They probably have infiltrated or gone into those um, Haitian communities just not too far off really? Carpen Road. Okay. Yeah, you have at least two or three Haitian communities just off Carpen Road so they can easily blend in and tell um, immigration Vinnie Bukembe do one. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Listen, let, me, let me let me stop. Oh, just but we have we have a problem. Uh -huh. the, the 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 Royal Bahamas Defence Force needs to pay attention to that southern area. That area has become a hotspot now, because they recognize um, that. Uh, in the VV hours of the morning, like around 2, 3 o'clock, dogs in that area are barking profusely. Normally when that happens, it could be a case of illegal migrants. Because I can tell you, uh, about 15 years ago, I was very active in assisting the immigration department with um, catching those illegal migrants. As a matter of fact, immigration was supposed to give me a, an award. Really? I caught... You caught most, that many? Santa, you won't believe this. One time, a vessel came into that boat ramp yes. in Marshall Road. Right. With about 300 Haitians on board. And you caught them? I was... I, I did something that the police told me I should not have done. Don't tell the country what it was. they told me, hey, you, 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 you're a serious fella, but don't do this anymore. Okay. Because you don't know. Don't you know what say I mean? what it was you did. But you know, map game, Utan desa. I can Okay. But the reality is I was able to hold those people at bay until the police came. Somebody, I phoned into the South Beach Police Station, told them what was happening. They responded right away, and of course, immigration. And you course, never got your award? I just didn't follow it up. There's a very senior immigration officer that lives, lives right down the street from me. Okay. All right. And um, um, what is interesting about that case, what I saw, is that when these migrants came on shore, to be honest with you, whatever I had in my fridge, I gave it to them. This is great. I had this great. sausage, bread, juice. Did you give them any blankets? Water. You know, blankets. Uh, I had a couple sheets, you know, because they, they had... But, 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 but what I found to be very interesting... I'm happy. ...is that there were a couple of migrants who were counting a bunch of U.S. 20s. Okay. Well, what, what's, what's that all about? Well, you, if, you, if you were smuggling to the Bahamas, you got to buy food, right? Man, I was like... They might have been the people these, who were responsible people have a lot, for these smuggling. These people got a lot of money on them, Well, you know? Well, but, but that was interesting. So that area now... It's becoming a hotspot again. Okay. Now, I tell you what the Defense Force used to do, and I know this for a fact. Go ahead. They used to have men come down there and sleep in the bushes. I, this is a fact. They stop. sleeping there? It is stopped. There? All right? Not since they, Monroe they, became Minister they, of I've never Security. seen anything happen under Monroe's um, But we have to get tenure, Monroe. We have to get Monroe to start having right? the boys so, sleep so, in the back so there. Obviously, and it's a good thing you didn't mention that, obviously that Marshall Road area near the South Beach Ramp mm -hmm. has become a hotspot again. Okay. Because apparently it's a gateway. It is not watched or manned. Really? No. And it's, it's open. You can take your boat, put it down, sail straight across the Andres, and about... 22 to 25 minutes and boom, you're in Andres. This a Haitian boat or a Bahamian you boat? You can use a speed boat. As okay. a matter of fact, what I had, I had, I had planned one day right. to use an 1100 horsepower jet ski mm -hmm. on, a, on a flat calm day and test it to see if I could get from that boat ramp to Andres in about 22 minutes. I really? could probably do it, yeah. I was going to okay. test it one day. Okay. But the reality is, is that area is not watched. It is unmanned really? and it's open. Yeah, man. That boat ramp in Marshall Road, South Beach, where I live. And right? about what time last night did my people Those people came in around 11 o'clock this morning. I mean, yesterday morning they came in. 
11 a.m. or 11 p.m. 11 a.m. in the morning. That's when really? they, that's when they came in. That's why I'm saying to myself, how did the, how did the defense force miss these people? How did they miss them? But that is they been. landed 11 a.m. yesterday morning at the Marshall Road South Beach Ramp. Really? How's that possible? Uh, I have a former school teacher out there. He lives in a very high, high house. Normally, he is constantly looking through his yeah. his binoculars, and he's very good at identifying yeah. Haitian right. people. And then the police. I, I know there are times, now when I'm exercising, I do see the police saturation patrolling. Those trucks, they do come around, like around 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, you can see them coming through. But they need to spin around there, like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, because I can tell you, I'm always trying to figure out why those dogs are continuously barking. And it's like, you, you can follow the dog bark. They start at one point, and then it keeps going, it keeps going and fading. So obviously, people are probably tracking along the shoreway to find their way into figuring out exactly how to get. So you think uh, there's big smuggling of taking course, place? Of course, not now. I can tell you, that marshal goes out beach area to the defense force, as long as to the police force, they need to pay attention to that. Plenty because now that we have this crisis, coming in? women, men, you know, mostly men. You know, okay. you do have women. Um, on on about three occasions, I may have seen you know young girls and maybe one or two kids. You know, okay. but it's mostly um, mostly men. But yeah, I, I was surprised at one point. Are there any you, reports in the media? of this 11 a.m. Yes, 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 yes. I, I heard the news. It was it was announced um, when they say South Beach. My mind did go on the South Beach ramp where I live, but it never. I never really paid attention until I got home yesterday as I began the exercise. Then they say, man, um, you know, the, the, the Haitians came in at the ramp here at 11 o'clock, and he said it was the whole place was locked down. It was completely swarmed with police and, and of course, um, immigration officers. But um, I, I want to send a message out to the Minister of National Security, and of course, well, him in particular, because he controls all of those um, branches, that that South Beach Ramp, they need to pay more attention uh, to that. And then let me send a message out to the Member of Parliament for Southern Shores. Um, Mr. Leroy Major, that, <laughs> that area is completely <laughs> filthy. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do this, this afternoon when I get off and I go to exercise, I'm going to take some photos for him to see how filthy that area is. All right, it's a contract for me to clean it up. I always had that contract you under the BLB. Contract? I always get that contract under the BLB. Really? Always. I'm telling you. Well, we have to get check it back the records of beaches and parks. Okay. I always have the contract to clean up that South Beach ramp area. But okay. apparently, Leroy Major has allowed it to get out of control. It is completely filthy. Oh, well, he, and and the gonna, neighbors are complaining. He's, he's gonna have to give that to you, my spiritual. The advice. neighbors are come. Come on, man. You, I don't charge that much. Okay. The 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 the, the, the clean it up. You know, okay. maybe fifteen hundred dollars, and and boom, that's it. Well, but, my brother, but, I say go to work and clean that. Yeah. Up. But a message to the minister of national security. That South Beach ramp. They have to pay attention to that. That is a very weak spot. Now, it's weak, weak spot. meaning it, it is easy to smuggle Haitians through that gateway. Any other nationality could be smuggled now, through there? Now, what I suggest they do is they put up a CCTV camera okay. right up on that boat ramp because what they were able to do, I can be honest with you now, that strip is completely littered. Honestly, at night, it, it, it's marvelous. That's why we exercise you know, even during the night until about 9 o'clock because the area is completely lit. Okay. All right, they did an excellent job with putting lamps on every single lamp pole straight out to the boat ramp. And when you look at it, if you're out to sea, you can see that bright light and you can just sail straight into that ramp. So it helps my people to, to guide come, themselves in, yeah. To come in safely. Yeah. yeah, you see? So why is it they're not coming in the night? Um, they used to, okay. but I guess where this thing has become so... Um, Any idea when you anticipate arrival? Senator, I can be honest with you, you know, with what's going on in Haiti, um, you can expect anything. Anything? Yeah, because if so you look I at the numbers want the now... the people of your community to start taking out some warm clothing, yeah. blankets. Yeah. And I, I think... Shouldn't we be prepared that if there are a large arrival, we can provide them. Yes, we have clothing, clothing yeah, food, some water, hot, some hot soup. Yeah, because one of the neighbors did mention that they look completely dehydrated. And did you she know? not provide 
any I can I can tell you what happened. Your neighbors, but, but they, I understand if the Haitian had arrived in Black Village, everybody in Black Village knows that we had to feed them and to provide them with warm clothing. Yeah. 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 But I, I always had concern about that Marshall Road boat ramp. That that is a gateway for all kind of nonsense. Really? Yeah. It's, it, I have to look at the, it. The government invested, if I'm not mistaken, about thirty thousand dollars in putting down a concrete um, roadway okay. that goes down into the water okay. under the F&M. Mm -hmm. I think about $30,000 was spent and it's there, it's nice and you can just spring your boat up, go out fishing or whatever have you and come back in and, and leave. So you can do nice fishing yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. good smuggling. Yeah. Either or. Okay. But normally when they have this big event in Andres, mm -hmm. most people use that ramp to sail straight into really? the Andres. Yeah, man. Sail straight into Andres. You know? okay. But that's something for the Minister of National Security to consider. How the Defense Force officers, um, you know, placed there on, on, on night patrol. Yeah. Let them sleep in the bushes. They, all, they, they did the it in the past. When the Defense Force was stationed on Absolutely. There. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I, I got a scare one day. I, was, I got up like around 5.15 to exercise, and when I walked down by the boat ramp, I was like, wow, I just saw these guys in Kami. But I recognized that you know, these have to be defense force poisoned up because they were armed, um, just watching the area to see exactly what was going on. So maybe they need to, um, you know, um, resume that. Okay. Especially now that we have this crisis in Haiti, and you know, I don't understand. I don't know the details of the smuggling, but I can tell you, it's easy to get them in there and and out of there. Okay. You know? Because it's because three Haitian communities are not too far from that boat ramp. Not too you, far. No, you can track straight across. Straight They're not across, shanty towns. You can track straight across the Manin plantation and just go straight into Calpin Road. So, what is the correlation between the Mount the the Munnings plantation and there's the no there's no correlation. It's just that you can come up on that boat ramp if you walk in. Yes, yeah, it's a You can walk straight across okay. and track. You can track straight across the line straight into Calpin Road. Okay. You see? So that's, mm -hmm. that's something they need to pay attention to. Okay. You know? But, yeah, interesting indeed. But to the Member of Parliament for Southern Shores, come on, Ali Roy Major, man. Don't let me you fall out. I can help you win the seat again if you're serious. You know? The, the, the you area can is have that. You could, I, the the area is completely I, filthy, I, man. I can it's that contract now if you can guarantee me he will be returned. Of course. Really? I, I, I can help him campaign. Yeah, man. But, but honestly, though, that area is disgusting. Well, my spiritual it's advisor. dirty, it's filthy, you have to be given that it needs to be cleaned because up. Because I need Leroy Major to return, and I think it would be powerful. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> absolutely. So about how many Haitians did arrive yesterday morning? Have you heard the count? I think it's probably a little over 120, 23 and or so. what has happened to the boat that they came in? Well, when I, when I went out there to exercise, I didn't see any, so I don't know, you know, if they were probably dropped off, which could be the case. Okay. Because normally what happens is you have speed boats and other boats just drop them off and then they make their way off, make their way. But you know, this human smuggling is something else. In the Bahamas, Explain. have we ever um, prosecuted folks for human smuggling? Well, is, people, been given jail time? people have been um, prosecuted. Um, it's a very complex situation. Because take, for instance, the people who are smuggling those Africans mm -hmm. into Sorry, America, I reach my phone. Mm -hmm. these are white people. The people who are trying to smuggle who Africans are, into America? Yeah. When you say Africans, who do you mean? Haitians. Okay. Haitians are African. You say white people are doing that? Yeah. Um, these okay. are white people. It is alleged, mm -hmm. well at least they look white, and they, it is alleged that they have some very sophisticated vessels. Okay. You know, if you're getting $7,000 per Negro, I mean that's better than slavery. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. I'm certain if you were wrong mm -hmm. and you could buy a Negro for $7,000, can you imagine all you have to do is smuggle him in and when you get off Miami, you tell him jump overboard and if he can't swim, he drowns. And if he could swim, well, if shark don't eat him, he gets safely to America. Yeah, and what is inter interesting too about the undocumented migrants, how do these PLP and FNM shirts get into Haiti? How was 
the PLP and the FNM shirts? How do they get into Haiti? Because sometimes when they come, they have them on. Well, don't you know, forget I don't know what, what's going on. I don't know what they're um, all about. Your first but, problem is you do not know who your representatives are. <laughs> now, you see what the problem is here? <laughs> right? What you trying to say, though? I mean, you like, have been criticizing a Haitian member of parliament. Now, I don't know where you get that from. You get it from me. Okay. The first thing you must now, why do... You, why are you trying to do that, though? Wow, the man asks, how the PLP should get in Haiti? How the FNM should I mean, get in we Haiti? Can't, we don't know. You I don't, don't know. know. Oh, but you know. I'm offering you an explanation. It might my. be true as well as it may not be true. Yeah, but you don't want to speculate, man, Santa. I mean, but spiritual do advisor, do you not remember that the FNM had... A Haitian, a Haitian member of parliament. Who was a member of parliament? Yes, for certain sure. It's Frankie Campbell. Yes, yes, yes. But I don't know that <laughs> I don't know that there were other F, um, Haitian Because you have not checked. Okay. The first thing you do is when a man Majors are not F and M. Why don't Majors you? are not Haitians. <sighs> My spiritual advisor. What the first thing You understand that, that right? My spiritual advisor, would you listen for a second? Right? You didn't cross me I, get this thing up. I, 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 like I did, you see I, how you go, right? I only identify one Haitian member of parliament. That's amazing. Just listen for a second. You're something else. You, just know, you, just, you just destroy everything. Oh, uh, Jesus. He wouldn't listen. <sighs> Boy, I tell L you. Listen. The first thing you do is when a person show up and he says, I am seeking a particular party just nomination. You destroy it every day. Ah, boy. I was almost it's, there. It's amazing. You don't want I, I was almost there. Why, why is it that you don't like for me to talk? I was almost there. My spiritual advisor. I, I almost see a contract, you know. <sighs> and you just jack it. No! Me. I just want you to listen for a second. Man, Rodney, man. You, in you, ain't, you, ain't, nobody, you ain't nobody friend, boy. You, 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 you uh, disgusting, man. My spiritual advisor is something. You, you bug me. I want you to listen to me. I had a couple of relatives who ran for elected office. This is Freedom Saved Match. by the bell. My name is Rodney Monker. I've only identified one Haitian who got elected to the Parliament of the Bahamas. Not since. What was Stephen Dillard? Stephen Dillard. And Stephen Dillard, it is alleged, was not a real Haitian. <laughs> <laughs> this is Freedom Match. God saved the king. It's powerful today, my spiritual advisor. Welcome back to Freedom Arts. My name is Rodney Monker. Bradley Roll is my spiritual advisor. And we've had a wonderful hour. Now he's going to do birthday, my spiritual advisor. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, I think we only have one, which is good. And then after um, that, we have a special guest. All right, good. So we want to wish a happy 13th birthday um, to Matteo. Okay, I did pronounce it correct. Matteo. A colleague from your parents, especially your mom, Kimberly, uh, your sisters, Kaylee. Uh, they love you and wish you a wonderful and fun-filled day. So happy birthday to um, Matteo. All right. Then, of course, we had a, a couple birthdays um, that were celebrated by the graduating class of 1983, a few of them, Rene and um, Roderick Colbrook um, over at Atlantis. We want to give you a special shout out. And all those who this is powerful. Uh, were celebrating birthdays from the class of 1983, Rene and all the rest of you, happy birthday, all the best to you. May you live to enjoy uh, many, many more. So um, um, I think that's about it. But um, um, all right, so Sandra, is your guest going to be here shortly? OK, Sandra, go ahead. Yes, my spiritual advisor. Um, I have no birthday. You know how many birthdays? No. Okay, good. So I wish everybody in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas who's celebrating a birthday today, happy birthday. And if you have a special anniversary, I say happy anniversary to you. And to all men and women, I say um, I salute you for your major contribution to the family and to nationhood. I'm going to have a special guest for a short period of time who's going to join us. So um, this is going to be very powerful indeed. And so um, 
I just want you folks to bear with me. Uh, and it's going to be a very great sorry, day sorry, sorry. right here on Freedom March. So my spiritual advisor, he shall retain. And this is powerful. How are you, sir? All right. All right. Fix yourself good. Make yourself as comfortable as you can. What is your name? I'm Father Bradley Miller. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, folks, welcome back. I have in studio with me a priest, Father Bradley Miller. Father Miller, welcome to Freedom March, and may I publicly shake your hand. Thank you very much, Mr. Monka. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I normally frequent your show from time to time when I have the opportunity. Thank you. And so I want to say that you always say your show is very powerful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you are here as my special guest. What are we going to discuss today? Well, you know, Brother Monka, um, there's a lot of things that have been happening in our society yes. with respect to crime and violence. And there's always this call about what the church is doing. You yes. know, the church is always trying to carry some blame. What Christian denomination do you belong I'm to? I'm a part of the Anglican faith. Okay. And so in response to all of that is happening, we as a church, All Saints Parish, in South Beach, New Providence, yes. we decide that we should play our role, play our part, and respond to this, what I call this culture of death and the structure in our land, this scourge of crime that yes. is happening in our land. Yes. And what can we do? And so we decided we must take up the mantle. Yes. And so what we decide is this coming Friday. Yes. We're having a youth forum. Yes. Um, we're having a youth forum. And we're inviting all young people um, from all over Nassau. Um, to come and be a part of the youth forum that we have. We have a number of persons that will come to speak. The youth forum is about saying yes to life. Yes to life. Yes, we okay. ask the young people to say yes to life. And so we have a, a panel discussion, and then we will have um, questions and answers. And those persons who are part of our panel, uh, we have the director of education. Yes. Which is Dominique McCartney Russell. We have um, Reverend Dr. Kerry Marcel. He's okay. a priest in the Anglican Church, and he's also the Dean of Students at um, St. John's College. Okay. We have also the, the Assistant Director of Youth, um, Mr. Rashad Ritchie. Yes. And then we have um, Superintendent. Charleswell Hanna, yes, from the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Yes, he is responsible for school policing. Yes, so these persons will come and they will share with us and give brief um, remarks, and then we'll, the young people will have an opportunity to have a dialogue. This is powerful. And then, of course, we have um, because our church has adopted CV Bethel, really, a school. We have adopted that school Good because school. the school is in the environment of the church. Right. And the church must be responsible for course, the environment it finds itself in. I'm happy to hear this. Yes, and so the students from CV Bethel will be there and there will be other youth groups that will be there um, to be a part. And we're asking all persons to come up. And then we don't stop there, Brother Monka. Go ahead, sir. On Saturday morning, we will have a prayer breakfast. Um, the prayer breakfast will be the Christian response to crime and violence in our society. That's the, the, the theme for the prayer breakfast, the Christian response. The Christian response. response yes. to the crime and violence in our society. Yes. And so we will have um, our guest speaker, Bishop Arnold Josie. I'm sure you know of him. I, I do. He's a no. former police officer. A former police officer. And so he and is. a uh, pastor, isn't he? And a pastor as well. As a matter of fact, I will share this with you. He is my squad instructor. I'm a former police officer. Really? Yes. Good man. And he's a very good man. And so we, we are excited. We're looking forward to persons coming out, um, being a part of the forum on Friday night. 
and being a part of the prayer breakfast on Saturday morning. Of course, at the prayer breakfast, we will have counselors yes. who will be on the scene. Yes. Our prayer group will be available yes. to speak to persons who may just want to talk to somebody yes. who might be going through something and we yes. want to say to them that, look, we have people who are willing to talk with you. Yes. People are willing to pray with you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, um, this is this Friday coming? That is correct. This now, Friday coming. This Friday is what day? So let's be clear on that day. This Friday is Friday the 15th. So it's on Friday the 15th. Friday the 15th. And guess what? That's yes. my wife's birthday, but I can't do nothing for Friday night. Well, this would be a great <laughs> so we got celebration. For <laughs> we got, I, I said that we got to celebrate the church. Of course. Yes. It's so, a great celebration. Yeah, Friday the 15th. Yes. Okay. This and, coming Friday. And it will commence with a march? No, we will meet in the hall, in the, the forum, hall. yes. Okay. And, and we will begin at 7. 7 p.m.? Yes, yeah, 7 p.m. in the evening. Okay, gotcha. And then we go till about 9. Ah. Or oh. we will be there as long as young people want to talk right. and have someone to pray with them or talk with Which them. Which hall? Where, where, where? This hall is the Hall of All Saints Church. Okay. The All Saints Community Center. Yes. Our church is located yes. in East Street South. Right. Just behind the, the, the um, City Market Shopping Center. Right. You know, you have Porky Gas Station, right. Shopping Center, Chinese Food Store. Right. When you come through that road, our church is just behind the shopping center. So it will be held at the church's... The church's hall. Ah, yes. got you. Yes. And that is Friday the 15th. Friday the 15th. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. And it could be open for about two, possibly three hours. Three depending. hours, depending on persons who ever need prayers. We're okay. not going to stop if people want to talk to someone. We, we, we have made the, the Friday evening available for, for young people to talk. Right. And if you want to speak to counselors, counselors will be on the scene right. to talk with you, to hear your concern, to, to give you advice, et cetera, et cetera. And there are a number of guest speakers. Yes. Go over their names one more time. The number of guest speakers that we will have, as I said, we will have the Director of Education. The director of Education. Ministry of Education. Yes. We will have the Assistant Director of Youth in yes. the Ministry of Youth. Right. We will have um, Dr. Charleswell Hanna, Superintendent of Police. And we will have yeah, one of our... Assistant Commissioner of Police now. Oh, he's Assistant. I, yeah. I, I thought yeah. he was still... No, uh, Chief he's, he's been okay. promoted. Yes, okay, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. But Hannah, I do apologize. I was calling wrong. and um, The wrong Congratulations. Right. Yes. Um, and then we will have Reverend Dr. Kerry Massa. Right. He is a priest in the Anglican Church. Right. And he is the Dean of Student at St. John's College. Uh-huh. And Bishop Arnold Joseph. Well, he will be Saturday morning. Ah, Saturday morning. Saturday morning at okay. the prayer breakfast. Got you. So yeah. we have completed those persons who will speak on Friday. So let's go to Saturday. Saturday morning will be the prayer breakfast. The prayer breakfast. The prayer breakfast. The theme for the prayer breakfast will be the Christian response to crime and violence. Okay. So Bishop Josie will speak to us about how do we as Christian respond right. to all that is happening right. in our society? Right. What what are we supposed to do? What is our duty as Christians? Right. And then of course again there will be time for questions and answers. And then, of course, there will be time, as I said, we will have our prayer counselors available. If people desire prayer, they may want to talk to somebody. Yes. We will make it available for them. Yes. And in the case of your particular church, you, your church is working with CV Battle. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. We have adopted that school. And um, any... Could you give me a quick idea as what kind of interaction, or are you just beginning to interact with CB Battle? No, we have established our relationship with them for quite some time. Okay. And they, as a matter of fact, they've just been to our church about two, three weeks ago. Okay. We, they will always come for worship, different groups, yes. different settings. Yes. So, no, we, we, we've been in, in relationship with them for quite some time. Okay. That is one that we have enjoyed and we, but we, we hope that we will be more closer in terms of we will do more. Right, right. And this will be the springboard right. for us to be more visible to them right. and with them. Right. Well, this is good news. Um, we, these are the things that ought to be encouraged. Um, do you see after this particular event moving further into 
other communities? Yes. As a matter of fact, we, we have always been a church that goes out in the community. Okay. Every so often, we do walk about in the community. We talk to persons. We give out flyers. We let them know that we are here as a church, that we are for them, and we are here to cater to their needs. Right. I always say to people that the church in the community is supposed to be for the people for the and people. not the other way around. Right, right. Yeah. Well, this is a good report. Did I fail to ask you a question that you think you had an answer to something that I may not have asked you? Is there something that I didn't ask you that you might want to comment on? Um, no, other than we just want to invite people to come out, um, especially Friday night, because I would say that Friday night is free. Okay. And of course, we, we will provide the, the young people with pizza and drinks. Okay. So Friday night is free. We want as many young people to come out. What are we, we doing to encourage them? What, what, what kind of strategy is being used? I, I know that with your involvement with CV Bethel, that should kind of be easy to encourage students and parents perhaps to attend. What other kind of strategy? I, well, we're hoping that out of this, we're gonna, because we're not going to let persons come and just leave. We're going to be able to have person to register. Yes. We want to find out what are your needs, what are your struggles, what are some of the things. How can we as a church help you and, as an individual? And, and then they will be in follow up. And in contact with you. And yes, we, and we will be in contact yes. with these persons. Okay. There are some persons who may not have a home church. We may want to say to them, well, would you mind considering this parish to be a home church? Right. There are persons who may you know, be living, um, don't, don't have that kind of a moral support with right. respect to family and right. things. And we, we will identify a person that we can connect them to. So this is, we're trying to, to be holistic in, as a church right. in our approach to the world. Yes. It's not about just preaching the gospel to people, but it's about touching the whole man yes. and reaching the whole man. The and whole this man. is what we're all about. And so when we talk about the whole man, we are talking about the body, the mind. The mind and the, the spirit. Amen. This the whole man. Because whole there, man. there are persons who are mentally challenged. Yes. We have to deal with them. Yes. There are persons who are spiritually challenged. Yes. We have to deal with them. Yes. And there are people who are um, um, financially challenged. Yes. And we have to deal with them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Have you ever thought about a marriage ministry? Um, I'm running into a lot of young people where the system has made it rather complex for them to get married. Um, have you ever thought about a kind of open door policy where those who might want to tie the knot, but has found it kind of complex that a strategy, a method perhaps can be adopted because I'm, I'm going to suggest that you are a marriage officer. That is correct. And therefore, you can, you can perform marriages. Yes. Have you ever thought about that? Because I'm um, running into young people who can't find no marriage, they, uh, who can't find no money, because they come to me and they said, listen, yeah. Mr. Monk, could you use the justice of the peace? Can you marry us? And I would say, listen, I don't have a marriage license. The most I could do is find your boyfriend or girlfriend. <laughs> but I, you know? Yeah. So, I want you to think about that because um, I'm concerned over the fact that I'm running into a lot of young people who wants to get married but don't have the financial means but I will and tell does you, not belong to a church. Brother Monka, I yes, will sir. tell you right now, um, and you are in the spirit, and why I say that is because at our church we're getting ready to start a marriage ministry. This is powerful. Um, we're getting, it is on my agenda. We're getting ready to start a marriage ministry. But I want to say to the person, look, if you need, if you, you want to get married, you can approach me. It is my duty as a priest. Yes. That is a sacrament of the church. Yes. It is my duty to see that you're married. Now, I'm going to take you through some marriage preparation. I'm going to take you through some counseling. As a matter of fact, I'm preparing two persons right now. Right. And they're not members of our church. Right. They just came in and wanted to get married, and I'm preparing them 
for marriage counseling. Right. I'm going through the preparation now. Right. And so our doors is always open. That is what the church is there for. The church is supposed to be there for the people. So when the people dead, the church is supposed to bury them. When the people were getting married, the church is supposed to marry them. When the people are sick, the church is supposed to be ministered to them. Yes. This, these are the work of the church. Well, tell them again where the church is located. Our give, church is located. Give them some telephone contact. The telephone contact for our parish is 392-7220. That's the church's office, 392-7220. We open every day, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. The, the administrator is always in the office. My number, my cell number is 801-4237. 801-4237. Anyone needs to get married, you can come to me. We're going to have a conversation. We can go through the marriage preparation classes because we we are mandated to do that as a church we're mandated to take people through yes and so we are available these services are available to the church our church again is located south beach behind the city market shopping center um right behind the shopping center is up there most people know porky's gas station yes. as we uh -huh. call it. so right opposite porky's gas station is a, Super Value Shopping Center, the road between the, the shopping center and and um, the Chinese. You drive through there. Our church is just behind the building. We are a family church. Yes. All things is a church of choice, you know. That's powerful. People are now recognizing this is something I want to be a part of. Yes. And it, you are in the deep south. And I'm in the deep south. This is great. And we are in the heart of the people. In the heart of the people. We are in the heart of the people. This is great. You know, you know what? You know the the, 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 the the phrase that we use? All saints on Calvary Hill where burdens are being lifted. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Would you kindly remind them of Friday's event, which is the 15th of this month? on Saturday event, which is the 16th of this month. Thank you, thank you so much. Brother yeah. Monka, on Friday, we have a youth forum. There will be a panel discussion. We have again, Dr. Charleswell Hanna, Assistant Commissioner of Police. We have the Director of Education from the Ministry of Education. We have the Assistant Director of Youth in the Ministry of Youth. We have Reverend Dr. Kerry Marcel, an Anglican priest. So they will be the panelists. This forum is open to all young people. We ask in all church on Friday the 15th to send the young people out. This can only be beneficial to them. Let's have a dialogue. Yes. Let's talk. The whole thing is we're asking them to say yes to life. Yes and to no life. And no to crime. Amen. Yes. And then, of course, on Saturday, we have the prayer breakfast. Not a prayer breakfast, you got to pay. Yes. It's $15 for the right. ticket. We have... Uh, Stew fish, stew conch, chicken sauce. We have um, Johnny cake, and then we have grits, and then we have a number of um, bush tea. Really? Yeah, a number of bush tea. We okay. ain't giving people no Lipton and all them. No, but yeah, I, hope, I do hope you have some real thing. love wine yeah. and tea. <laughs> I, I don't know, I'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's great what your church is doing. And um, although you are focusing on the youth, I'm certain that senior people... And yes, oh yeah, no, it's not just... Are all are invited. invited. All are invited. No, it's just not for... While we fo our focus is the youth, yeah. but all is invited. And it would be invite good... all the, 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 the elderly. To come, and yeah. it would be good if you can encourage young people to bring their parents. Yes. I think it's time yes. that young yes. people... Yes. Grab mama and papa right, and, and bring and say, them. Right. Come go with us to yes. this and so function. we want to encourage the young people to bring yeah. their parents. Bring their parents. Yes. And yes. possibly their grandparents. Yes. And have a dialogue. Because all of us, by some way, some form, yes. are affected. Yes. By crime yes. and violence in our society. Yes. And it is yes. also a great idea if you took book and pen and take notes. Yes. Um, I find that when I go to events and I take notes, I kind of write it right in my head. Right, right. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, I'm pleased with what you are doing. Um, I can't make a commitment that I will come, but it's, uh, it's not too far from 
two of my siblings who live uh, in, you the, tell them come. in the southern part of mm -hmm. the island. They're old people, oh. <laughs> but it isn't too far. So who knows? I could show up, but that's right. no promise. Right. But it's great what is happening, and these are the things that we need to encourage the Christian denominations to to do in the community. Right. Because we've had a lot of problems. Perhaps the next time you come, I would ask you what you thought about crime and punishment, but you need not make it controversy <laughs> today. Uh, we, we will talk about it another time. Another I, time. I promise you, if you yeah, yeah. we'll talk about it another but time. But you can think about what yes. I'm putting to you. Yes. And the next time, if it's God's will, that we do meet on television again, Yes. we can, you know, talk about it. Right. Because there are a lot of social problems. Yes, that we and I, you know, I have, I have my views, and yeah, I, I, yeah. I know. But yeah. you could hold them for yeah. today. Right. <laughs> I'll on, hold them today for the day, yes. Friday the 15th. Yeah, we focus on Friday the 15th. Friday the 15th. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great day. So Friday the 15th, 7 p.m. 7 to 9 p.m. Well, 9 we say 7 to 9. Yeah. But as long as young people want to talk or people want to talk, our right. council will be available. We'll be there all night if we have to, just to talk with people. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then Friday, I mean, Saturday, pardon me, 8 to 12, the prayer breakfast. Oh, it's great. It's, yeah. it's a nice outing. I always like where your church is located. It's, mm -hmm. It feels like it's in the country. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, that's what I like about it. it. It feels like it's out there in the bush. Right, right, right. Like it's in Bamboo Town. Yeah, we in the, yeah, we're in the center. We're surrounded right. by communities. Yes. And so if we are be surrounded by communities, we have to affect that community. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah so this is great. So anything else you want to tell me? Before well, we I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to be on, on this show. It's our honor. And, um, um, you know, I want to just okay. encourage people to come out, the young okay. people particularly, on Friday night. And, um, thank you. Saturday, come out and support well, us. Well, folks, our, prayer our breakfast. special guest has been Father Bradley Miller. God save Father Bradley Miller. God <laughs> save all saints. God save young people everywhere. God save the king. This is powerful. Do well, everybody. We'll be right back after the break. Hold on. Freedom March, my name is Rodney Monker, and our guest has been a priest of the Anglican Christian denomination, Father Bradley Miller. Well, I'm going to now turn to my spiritual advisor, Bradley Rule. So, Brother Rule, welcome yeah. back. Yeah, good afternoon. Sorry, thank you so much. We have a, um, an announcement here from the Ministry of Education, Technical and Vocational Training. It's going to be a National Youth Peace March and Rally. Um, this is going to be held, uh, actually begins on Friday. The 15th of March 2024. This event, of course, will provide uh, public and um, private school students from a preschool to senior high school with a platform to promote peace, express their concerns about violence, and offer suggestions as to how conflicts re conflict resolutions um, can help. Uh, this is a national initiative. All family island districts will participate by marching and rallying simultaneously. Where possible, it is anticipated that approximately 9,000 students from the Providence and throughout the Family Islands will, will participate in the march and rally. So in the Providence, the march will commence um, at 10 a.m. Uh, from the Southern Recreational Grounds, concluding at the rally site on Clifford Park, uh, which is anticipated to begin at about noon and end approximately at 2 p.m. Uh, the youth Peace Rally will reflect the sole participation of students uh, from public and private institutions to ensure the effectiveness of the, uh, this initiative has been expanded to engage students in a meaningful way, which includes the facilitation of essays, uh, TikTok posters, and local competitions for students um, in preschool, primary, junior, and senior high schools. Uh, right, of course, this event's sponsors include, well, not limited to the Adrian Fox and the Fox Foundation, 
Pepper and Spice, Astros Holding, of course, the Art District, New Providence Development Company, um, United Sanitation, St. Anne's Anglican Church, Grace Community Church, New Providence, and College Park Limited, and of course, Butler, St. Clair Group of Companies. All right, so this is going to be a national uh, youth peace march and rally. And of course, there is a route that this march um, will take, uh, which is going to take place on Friday, the 15th of March, 2024. The march starts at 10 a.m. Uh, from the Southern Recreation Ground, and then they're going to go south on Market Street to Chapel Street. And once you get to Chapel Street, you're going to go west on Chapel Street and west also onto Meadow Street, and then from Meadow Street west to Nassau Street. And then once you reach the junction at Nassau Street, you're going to go north on Nassau Street to West Bay Street, and once you reach West Bay Street, you're going to then go west on West Bay Street to the uh, Clifford Park um, area. So, of course, that's the, the route um, that this march, this peace uh, march will actually take. Let me go over that again. The route, of course, uh, the, it, it starts at the Southern Recreational Ground, and from there you're going to go south on Market Street. Um, south on Market Street to Chapel Street. Uh, once you get to Chapel Street, you're then, you're then going to go west on Chapel Street along west to Meadow Street. And then of course, uh, Meadow Street to uh, the junction of Meadow Street and Nassau Street. And then you're going to go north on Nassau Street, north on Nassau Street to West Bay Street. And then once you reach West Bay Street, you're going to go west on West Bay Street to um, Clifford Park. All right, so that's the route. Friday, March the 15th. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Medusa. I thank you, my spiritual advisor. So the Ministry of Education is having this youth march. Yes, yes, they are. They're going to march through the streets of New Providence. Yes. And it will culminate at where? Clifford Park. Clifford Park. Yeah. And at Clifford it's Park. It's called a National Youth Peace March and Rally. National Youth, youth March. Peace National March. Youth Peace, Peace March and Rally. Okay, and these youths that they're focusing on are students? Yeah, um, from public and private school students. Okay. Um, from preschool to senior high school. Okay. Uh, of course, it says with a platform to provide, sorry, with a platform to promote peace. Of course, they express their concerns about violence and other suggestions for conflict uh, uh, resolutions. So that's important. Give me the streets one more time that they will be marching okay. through. So the route, again, the, um, the, the event is going to kick off. It's going to start at the Southern Recreational Grounds. Okay. All right. And of course, uh, the route is that they're going to go south on Market Street. Um, of course, from Mar south of Market Street to Chapel Street. And then you're going to take a right onto Chapel Street, which will take you into a westerly direction, uh, Chapel Street. And then, of course, straight from Chapel Street onto Meadow Street, you continue west. And then, of course, until you get to Meadow Street and Nassau Street. Okay. You know, where Sue Value, that light yeah. is Sue Value. Okay, so yes. once you get there, you're going to make a right. So the main thing we go north. You're going to go north on Nassau Street, all the way north on Nassau Street to West Bay Street. And of course, when you reach the junction of Nassau Street and West Bay Street, you're going to make a left, which will take you west onto West Bay Street. And of course, it's going to take you right into the Clifford Park, um, where it's going to end. Okay. All right. Okay, well, let's see how that will materialize. Absolutely. And of course, there will be a number of government organizations that will participate in it, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, their ban, okay. the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, and His Majesty's prison ban, they will participate. Okay. So it's a day of excitement for young people. Okay. So we'll see how they go. All right. Well, my spiritual advisor, this is the hour that you open up the telephone yeah. lines. Call in. You can call in now. The line's open. 323-7775 is the number to call. 698 Zero seven seven five six nine eight zero seven seven six. So call us. You can engage us. We have about twenty minutes 
uh, where we can actually take some calls, 323-777-5698-0775. Uh, Zero seven seven six. So the same as if um, Santa, when I get home, I'm gonna have to confirm that we did have um, some migrants landing in the South Beach area. There are more. No, no, no. Right? I'm saying my my reports were denied. So I'm saying when I get home, I'm gonna have to ask my neighbor um, to confirm. But he, he your neighbors have said the no, patients. No. Did arrive? Yes, yes. They say around 11 a.m. this morning. They say there were a lot of police cars and immigration officers. Officials but apparently, yeah, they're denying, denying it. it. Yeah. So we'll have to. Don't want to see it. We'll have to go back. It bien. Man, man. Oh boy. The spiritual advisor. If oh the boy. The government oh boy. is denying it. It means that the Haitian must have hidden very well. well don't do that, Santa. We, My this, spiritual this advisor. This is a serious your business. Your problem you know? is you are not examining. The this neighbors, is serious business. The neighbors of your community, if the people of Black Village were to tell me that a boatload of Haitian arrived in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. I would ask them, but well, how the heck did the boat get into Black Village because there's no... No, there's no there, water. There's no water. But, 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 but if my area say, could easily be verified because there's plenty of water and it's happened on numerous occasions. Right. And your neighbors so that's why I accept ought it. to have smart TV or should I say a smart CC we camera? need we need a camera on that boat ramp. That would be interesting if the Minister of National Security, along with the Member of Parliament for Southern Shores, could look at installing a CCTV at that boat ramp. Well, my former teacher, I'm not going to call his name, but my former teacher, he lives out there, and he lives in one of the most sophisticated homes, and he's able, he specializes in spotting a Haitian vessel. Okay, we got a call? Yeah. Okay, welcome to Freedom Mars Call. You're live. Mr. Martin, Mr. Spiritual Advice. Good afternoon, sir. I am speaking about the two gang behaving. Uh, young men sent us up. I had a national security. Can you hear? Tell the producer to turn him up. At this time, nobody can tell you, nobody can say except for the risk. Yeah, and his call is gobbled too. All right, so let's take this next. Sorry about that caller. Call back from a Clara line, please, okay? So who's the next caller? Welcome to Freedom March. Call your life. Do we still have that call? Did we miss that call? Okay, televisor. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm good. Great. Rodney Monka. Sir. How are you? I'm fine, sir. It's amazing how Spirit Televisor is trying to talk earlier, and you, you try to shut up now and every, every, every chance you got, right? You have to stop doing that to him, man. And then when he, when he was trying to talk to you, he was shutting you down. Y'all got this little tit for tat, butter for fat thing going on, man. Well, you I don't want to kill my cat. Apologies, caller. We we apologize to you about that. You have a point you wanted to make, caller? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, was was he done? Okay. Well, if he wasn't done, he can call back. Welcome to Freedom Watch, caller. You're live. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, we can't hear the callers, right. actually. And uh, Mr. Monco. Thank you so much. Yes, good afternoon. Um, i like to know if the um, license, uh, public license, for a driver's license is ready and where is that, please? My husband put in for about six weeks ago, and he don't know where to go to pick up his driver's license. Really? No. Um, well, that means I won't be able to answer you. I will have to ask an official. I can't answer. You, you, you would recall that they have been in the process from moving from point A to point B. <clears throat> so I'm not sure. But let me find out and see where. Where did he, where did he go to obtain his license? Um, to the sports center. Okay, and they're no longer at the sports center? I don't think so. It's I a, think they said it was down there on Thompson Boulevard, but right. I'm not sure. Just to pick up license now because I don't know it's a mix-up. It's okay. a possibility that they could be collected at the Edwin Smiley Building, if I'm not mistaken. I've, I've read a um, communication to that effect. It's a possibility that that's where it could be collected, okay? Um, you know where the Edwin Smiley Building is? No. On Thompson Boulevard? You know the old Scotiabank or Citibank Building? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think I may have seen a communication that suggests that that's where it can be collected. Okay. Thank you very much. 
You're more okay. than welcome. I'll double check with you before the show ends and, and let you know, okay? Please do. I'll appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, welcome to Freedom Mars. Call your life. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Good man, sir. Sir. You hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. What I call him about is about the, he gave me to credit the Haiti. Did okay? It, mm -hmm. Defense force? I think at this time, no can guarantee nobody stays in Haiti. I think I had a, I had a not a serious minister say the Bahamian would be protected and remote. At this time, you shouldn't send nobody to Haiti now. Okay? Only the rest of people in Haiti are protected. If, if this is somewhere that's bigger than the Bahamas, people tell people in the Bahamas like that, no, everybody's going to make money safety. And yet, you're correct. You are, you are correct. You took up the license from the Evans Old Coast Prime Building on Thompson Boulevard in the back on the second floor, just being at the link. Oh, okay. We thank you so much for information. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if our defense force officers will be going directly into Port-au-Prince. I think they may be assisting with marine um, ship, some of that nature. Coast Guard training. Right, right. I don't think. But they, Mr. Monroe yeah. is going to be here tomorrow, tomorrow if it's God's will. So, so he will tell us exactly. exactly where it is. But he may not be able to do so because every Haitian who got a TV in Haiti, they're listening to me. All right. Well, Marco, so I don't think no place is safe in Haiti now. No place. It's safe. Only Port-au-Prince is an issue. From what I'm understanding, Port-au-Prince and maybe certain. Well, based on based on based on what's been reported, Port-au-Prince. Were you in Haiti? Uh, young man, please, man. You know. To say that no place, listen. To say that no place in Haiti is, is is not safe is not a fair statement. Let me just say if, that. If, if the jail, if, if, if the jail was overthrown, yeah. come on, young man. If, if, if yeah. the guys in court the, break open the jail and everybody else, yeah. as bad as it may be in Port-au-Prince, don't do that. Don't say no place in Haiti is safe. That's not a fair statement. Let me be honest with you. All right, I've been following the story, and that statement is not correct. All right. Special advice, sir. You, you, I can't, the jail, the, if the jail is breaking up everybody, let's feel the jail. Can you rip, rip Haiti, Miss Haiti? Yeah, but I can't, I, you can't say that there's no safe place in Haiti. Do you know how big Haiti is? Would you go to Haiti now? I would go. I would go to Jack Mel. I, I, I'd probably even go to port au I, I'd go there. Because that's, those areas are not being directly affected by what's going on. Okay, so All right. Yeah, don't, oh, don't say that no place in Haiti is not safe. Don't say that. That would not be a fair statement. Okay. I, okay, that's your opinion. Okay. Yeah, All right. Sir. Okay, take care. All right, let's take the next call. Welcome to Freedom Marsh Call. You're live. Hello. Uh, Freedom Marsh, good afternoon. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, how are you doing? Okay, wanted to speak to Mr. Rodney Monster, please? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Monson, is it possible uh, to reach Fred Mitchell for me, please? Who? Mr. Fred Mitchell. But of and course. What would you MP like? MP for Foxville. Yes. Cockburn Street. Yes. Lime Green Club. Yes. Concerning a piece of property on the side of me, please. What? What? I'm what, what, what really? Um, give that information to me again. Cock Blaine? Cock Blaine Street. Yeah. On, come on to Lime Green Clothes. Lime Green Clothes? Yes, sir. Okay. And what is wrong with the property? Um, it's a hazard. Hazard. Now, describe that property because it sounds like it's a property belonging to an FM friend of mine. Okay, I don't know if you recall, there was a pharmacy used to be right on the corner. Yeah. Okay, you Perfect. come straight ahead, I'm not just ahead in. Okay. On the right-hand side. Okay, I have an idea who owns that property. Have you ever seen a senior f &M living through that corner? I don't know. I know a police mm -hmm. retire officer used to live three years ago. Okay. Passed away. We got it down, Park. I will send this to Minister Fred Mitchell. I thank you very much. Okay? Thank, thank you, Gordon. 
All right. Take care. 323 Welcome to Freedom March Call. You're live. Good afternoon, Mr. Ryder. Good afternoon. And good afternoon, the good senator. So, First of all, and the good senator, I need um, the minister to be here tomorrow. I've got a question. I want you to put them. I don't get in. I might look at all of them with one eye, like a cross eye, because that big, big, that big beach out here don't have no camera. We did all kind of, uh, we call it technician around here. It's a crying shame, man. Did it give someone the contract just to put cameras on there? Which beach? We got cameras all over the road, all over the place, and, and the big city there where people are coming and no cameras. Let's talk about someone in the BC, put a big pole down there and put a, a you know, camera so you can see everything at home. Where's That's this? Simple. Where's that? I look at all these politicians with one eye. I ain't gonna lie. Y'all have a blessed day. Which, which area is that? Which beach is that? Special writer in your area. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And okay. you can go try put that to your minister too. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have a bigger place there? Yeah, because that's, no that's a gateway. Coming in like, like, like looking at the promise of the Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, no one watching. Yeah, you, you, you're right. You can't be serious. You're right, you're right. Yeah, that that's that's a that's a dangerous spot right there. I look at all these politicians with one eye. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I can't help my body at them. All right, take your call. We appreciate you. Three two three seven 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 five. Welcome to Freedom March. Call you live. Job, job, job. Amen, my brother. Yeah. This is my oh, God. Was gobbled. We have any issues with the line? But this, Hello. Okay, welcome to Freedom March Call. You're live. Hello. You're live, caller. We can hear you. Yeah, good afternoon, it's Virtual Advisor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. First time, Paul. Welcome. Hey, I want to piggyback on it. What the gentleman just speak about the safety in Haiti? Yes, he's okay. talking foolishness, man. Because I just came with Haiti today. Yeah, really? Yeah, we know just that. Came today. Were you just in Haiti? I was Wait. there for three weeks. You in Haiti? Vacation. You in yes, Haiti? What were, been, you, what were you doing in I've Haiti? Been what were you doing in Haiti? You, 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 I just been with the family. Right. My wife's family is Haitian. Okay. Okay. Um, and we went to Cape Haitian. Yep. And we went everywhere in Cape Haitian. We even went, went with a cruise ship for this. Yep, it's Lama beautiful. Hadi. It's beautiful. All those places. So, yeah, man. Ain't no problem in Cape Haitian. No. Okay. None we, whatsoever. We know that. You could ride the streets any time of the day or the night. I mean, you don't have to worry about nothing. So yeah. where is the problem in Haiti? The problem, all the money, the problem is only in port au -Prince. Port -Prince, Only okay. in port au -Prince. Okay. There's a road that separates port au -Prince. If you leave port au -Prince to go to Cape Haitian, they have a road block. But far as station and chop mill and all the mother and station be and all of it. Yeah. Uh no problem. Absolutely. Well, I'm 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 I thank you thank for you so much. that wonderful report, okay? Yes, sir. Thank well, you, well, fellow. Well, you okay. too. Take care. Three two three seven 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 five. Welcome to Freedom March, caller. You're live. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How you doing? We're doing well, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mark, how are you doing, sir? I'm fine, sir. Mr. Mark, could you, could you please, uh, you know, I saw, I saw the Prime Minister said in the House of Assembly to the leader of the opposition that, that they should bring verified evidence before you deliver to the public. Okay. By and I saw them, this first arrival of water about the nation landed in South Beach at, at 11 a.m. yesterday, and, and he had to come back and say he's not. Uh, he's not sure as it was. There was so a report. Mr. Mungo, you, you should know by now, from the other day to now, the police um, or the, the national security should know that the major was landed at the beach. Okay, okay. So what do you suggest happened to me? I'm saying, I'm saying you, 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 you put the red flag that we had a gun that we gave to the red But you, so it, you bring that on, sir. Right. You know, and if you believe that. Uh, yeah, but, okay, no problem. Let me apologize to you. I was just going to information I received from my neighbors when I was walking with them because they were home yesterday uh, in their homes and that's what the information they gave to me when we were exercising. But I did come back and I say that uh, apparently it can't be verified. So I am so sorry if I offended you. 
I'm so sorry that I did offend you by doing that, and I hope that you could find some place in your heart to forgive me. And you are correct. Next time, I will verify to make sure that it is correct. I just couldn't see my neighbors just spill out the information without having facts, all right? So I do apologize. Welcome to Freedom March, call your life. Spiritual advisor. Yes, sir. You need to ask that gentleman who came on the night he just came here today. Miss Haney came on. Every airline is just continuing. And then in another Haiti. Miss, how do you get paid today to not talk? Well, I know they have various. They have different airports in, in Haiti. He, he didn't come. Out, he didn't come out of the airline. He came on from Haiti. All All right. Right. Airline, major airline, he stopped going to Haiti at at the apartment. Okay, could have been a private. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, no, well, it could have been a private charter. I'm on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Batima, anyhow, he's listening to you. Maybe he'll probably call in tomorrow, or, or maybe I don't know. But thank you so much, for the caller. Uh, three two three seven 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 five is the number to call. Six nine. Yeah, okay. okay. Welcome to Freedom Mars caller. Who been in now? So about him or have you on? Hey, listen, that gentleman, tell him if you want to travel to the East Bahamas, then you don't be playing. Take that other airline. Yes, of course. There are Asian people you know, who own airlines, I suppose, they eat. You get start traveling out with your key on belt. You get poly meal, and then you have Mary. All right? Go to us for a final commemoration for a call station. Yeah. The final, whatever it's going on. You're a good man. So I'm saying the only plane that goes to the We appreciate you. Get your information. Drop. Thank you, sir. We appreciate that. That settles that. <laughs> Three two three seven 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 five. Hot topic. Six nine eight zero seven seven five. Six nine eight zero seven seven six. Any other stand up? You come to the end of the show. Really? Um, but um, um, some interesting developments going down in Haiti, uh, Senator. Uh, well, it was great news when the spiritual advisor reported to me that my people had landed safely in South Beach. Now Ooh, it okay. appears that they have disappeared. I don't know what's going People on. Upset with you the most I can say is Kampe Buki Wap Domi. So, um, hello Buki, are you sleeping? Kampe Buki, are you standing? So, that's the most I can say. But the world continues. Haiti is still there. Um, the United States is still not aiding Haiti the way it aids white Israel and white Ukraine. So I just want you Negroes to recognize mm -hmm. what we are up against. The racism continue to exist. And we, the Negro people, we are the actors in it, okay? But if you look at the history of Haiti, it's horrible. This is Freedom March. God save, notwithstanding what they do, our blessed sovereign, King Charles III, the entire royal family. God save the king. God save Haitians everywhere. God save the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. God save the king. And if it's possible, we will return tomorrow. Do well.